Good day, everyone. My name is Todd Stanley, and I'm here today to introduce you to the Discovering Bigfoot podcast. As you may have heard, this expansion is growing dramatically, and from now on, I'm going to turn it over to my bu- my brother and colleague and student, Kyle, who spent weeks and weeks out in the wilderness with me in Radium, British Columbia. We were out in New York. He's currently, and, and we were out in New York in the Adirondacks, which is amazing. We had amazing Sasquatch encounters, amazing evidence has been produced. The man is on a roll, and from now on, he is going to be hosting the Saturday Night Discovering Bigfoot podcast. If you have something to say, if you want to go on the Elite podcast, you want to talk to Kyle, you have some amazing stuff going on, you go through Kyle, you do Kyle's podcast, you talk to Kyle, and Kyle will make stuff happen. He's boots on the ground, he's profoundly about this discovery. And for his first interview, he interviews me, Todd Standing, and you are going to see him push the limit. He's going to push me into a place of absolute discomfort. That's why we're colleagues. That's why it's hard for us to be friends because we push each other. This discovery matters, and we grind, and we push, and we fight for it. And that's why he is a powerful part of this cooperation, the Discovering Bigfoot cooperation. We have big plans, big things happening every year. Kyle is going to start doing his own expeditions. He's going to start doing his own field research with individuals from the United States specifically. I'm very excited to have him on board, and he has my full support for the Discovering Bigfoot podcast. Here is the first episode, and as it starts, it starts a little way into it. I think we made a little bit of a mistake. Apologize for the technical difficulty, but we're talking about video two, Todd Stanning's are discovering Bigfoot cooperations video two. You want to look it up online. It's a Sasquatch standing up and sitting back down. He's going to get into some deep questions. People have never talked to me, never gone to this subject as deeply as he does. So here's the podcast rolling. Enjoy. And this will be every Saturday. If you want to get a hold of Kyle, he's the discovering Bigfoot podcast at gmail.com. Send him an email or go to the discovering Bigfoot fan page on Facebook He is there, he's watching, he's waiting, he's looking for people. There's going to be some amazing shows coming on. I'm very, very happy to be supporting and facilitating this on my YouTube channel. So here we go, hang on to your shorts. The very first ever Discovering Bigfoot podcast, and they'll be every Saturday till the end of time. Enjoy. So when um, you wanted to go out to get proof or not proof of um, Bigfoot, how did you get in touch with this guy to come out and film this for you? You said you you had a National Geographic guy? Yeah, I don't remember. Gosh, that was so long ago. That was such a long time ago. I don't remember how I got a hold of it. I don't think he actually was a, a National Geographic videographer at the end of the day. I think I got totally BSed in there. But uh, yeah, it was uh, so long. My sister was there for that one. So I had no idea what I was getting into. I kind of, you know, I thought the the Bigfoot phenomenon was kind of funny the way people took it so seriously. And, you know, it's just, it wasn't something I, even I wonder if Harry and the, Harry and the Hendersons have probably been out already. I just thought it was cute the way people just get all passionate about it and they spend their whole lives devoted to it when they see one. And how funny that is that you're just silly guys. And I turned into that guy. Mm-hmm. Yes, you <laughs> kind did. Of, I guess. So um you got out there. How long mm-hmm. of a how long of a hike was it to get up in there? Was it a couple days? Is it yeah, it was two days at least. Man, it's just like I just don't remember it very well at all. So long ago. And I uh I'm talking it so long. I don't even think I have notes from that anymore. This was your first encounter with the Sasquatch though, like in person though, right? Yeah, I guess it was. I didn't, I didn't think of it at the time. 
but it definitely was. And, and it was, it was, it seemed, uh, well, there was, I was, I was out there and I was talking a lot about it. And then there was, uh, a local guy that I worked with, Trevor, who was a paramedic, who who knows Sasquatch is real, and just a tough dude. Like he spent time as a rodeo clown, and he was the kind of rodeo clown that the bears, the 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 bull's horns would like touch his ass before he started running. You know, but just just a level of bravery. Like you know, he'd stand off with bears and stuff. So I was working with that guy who was a freaking fearless lunatic, and and he washed out when you know we were rock climbing one day. A little bits of debris came down and smashed him in the skull and stuck into his head almost bled to death getting them out of there. And uh, I just bring this up because there's just dangers, you know, like even when you go up for radium, like you're in the wrong place, wrong time, a little gust from the gods, a few rocks come down, a pebble comes off, a tree decides to fall. You're, you're, you could die. I mean, just, just not even forget about the bears, the mountain lions, the terrain will kick your ass. You slip, you know, or somebody above you slips, a rock comes down in the head. I literally have a video I'm going to put up on Sasquatch Sunday <coughs> where Logan, is up there with uh, Craig and they send a rock down behind me. It goes past me. And I go over to Logan. I go, dude, you got to tell me. He goes, why? Well, that would have killed me. Like, you know, I know the rocks are yeah. only 90 miles an hour, but it's, it's a, it's a five pound rock, man. That hit me in the back of the head. I'm dead. So these little things, you know, that people don't get, that's just a, a way of life for me that I, I you got to be on your toes. Cause you know, it's really, really dangerous, but uh, yeah, I, I apologize. I'm not going to, and I, I find that uh, when you go through, I, I know a lot of people can understand this, when you go through really bad trauma, like I have for three years, um, you just, your memories are not great. So uh, I just do the best I can to, and I, I was, uh, I'm not the same human being, literally. The foundations of who I am, my personality are the same, but just the, with wisdom and knowledge, I'm, I'm not the same man anymore. I've, I've changed even in the last four years, I'm not the same man. Oh, you're you know, definitely not. I, when I first met you, you were a different person. And that was two years ago now, three years ago now. Yeah. And people that are close to me are really seeing that. So um, you just, and, and, I, and why does that matter? Because, because now you're dealing with a clean Todd standing who has a better understanding of the world and, and the things around him. So I have a better foundation. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to help this for the discovery process. I'm a, I'm a better version of me to facilitate this discovery and that should scare people because I did good before I was impressive before <coughs> we need a new level <clears throat> of amazing you're going to get it from me taking my vitamins eating good food uh having amazing people in my life training in the gym grounding <clears throat> meditating spiritual connecting with new ways that's what's so great about this is even 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 people that do yoga people that are trying to all, all I see these people doing is try, trying to get back to their natural self, connect with themselves spiritually. And that's all this discovery is about. Iceman training that's hot. You know, I, I talked about yoga, <coughs> wilderness workouts, grounding, getting back to nature. Doctors are telling you to go out in nature. And, and, and that's what this, this discovery process is about. And that's, that's the changes that are going on in me as I'm connecting more to nature. So would you say that you were, you're a better person now than when you first had your first encounter with that Sasquatch on video one? Just, just enlightened. I don't like that word better, but I'm, I have a lot more wisdom. I'm much more enlightened and I don't, you know, I can look back now and go, I'm glad the Sasquatch knew there was something special about me. They saw through the bullshit. Otherwise, none of that would have happened. They knew there was something about me or maybe again, maybe they knew exactly who I was going to be, you know, probably i mean i have to accept this because this is hard hard pill for me to swallow the footage i got was allowed they knew that was happening they mm -hmm. knew to let that happen they were waiting for it those individuals like jane she knew she was going to be that video for footage she knew it and she and she was prepared for that and it's changed her it's it's she knows she's out there she knows people are looking at her pictures she feels it and she was ready to do that. She made that sacrifice, I guess you could say. That's how enlightened these beings are. Everything is by design. I literally can't sit here anymore and go, oh, I, I got that. I trip. No, you don't. Every time I think I'm a, a step ahead of them, I realize I'm so far behind. I yeah. thought it was ahead, you know? So yeah. that's the that's the level of enlightenment I have now is I, I go out there. I go, when you're ready, just let, let's do it, guys. Like, they know better than I do. The master will give me that. That's why I don't even know it's, if it's footage. I don't know what the evidence they're going to give me is. I don't know. 
I feel like it has to be video. I can't see it being anything else or photograph or something, but uh, they've always, they've always just been so far ahead of me and they're just always in the know. They know what the best thing to do is. And uh, even, even with the paradigm shift a little bit with these photographs and these videos that I have, that are very amazing. Like, look at the, tr the truth is those are real Sasquatch videos. And did we really make a difference? I think we did. I think there's a few million people out there who were impressed with it. And, and there's, there's millions that saw discovering Bigfoot and it was good. <coughs> it was a good stepping stone. Test the waters. And, and, and the truth at the end of the day is though, most people don't believe it. Most people, I mean, can you imagine we're a species where we're here, Kyle, telling the truth. You, there was a Sasquatch in New York and you damn well know it. And so to say oh, yeah. that was a Sasquatch, man. And we put that up on YouTube and nobody really gave a shit because there's so many freaking liars out there. We're such a lying, deceitful species. We're so deceitful that people didn't really believe us, did they? The news cameras didn't show up. Like we interacted with Sasquatch in freaking four days, man. Do you have any doubt in your mind at all? I get backed up towards a Sasquatch. You think that was a guy out there? No. Hmm? I mean, come on. You know damn well, like in your heart and your soul, if you took a lie detector test, you'd pass it 100%. There was a Sasquatch there. And nobody really gets, you know, 100,000 people watch the video. No big deal. Don't don't give a shit. We just, I've interacted with a, with a freaking incredible primate in New York State. Don't worry about it. Because mm -hmm. because we're, we're such a bunch of liars. And you have to accept that. So do I, Kyle, that we live amongst a species that's extremely deceitful. So much so that we don't need, we can't tell the truth from both. Are, are chemtrails real? I don't know. Is the government out to destroy us? Was COVID real? Is, is the shot, what, what is the shot? What is it? Were they trying to help us? Or are they trying to destroy us and annihilate us? And you hear both sides, anti-vaxxers, vaxxers. The U.S. is one of the worst. Are you a Democrat or are you a Republican? All right, well, oh, let's, let's, not, let's not get into that now. Um, the, the, point is, the point is the separation, right? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and that's, that's, that's the reality of our species. And, I, you know, Black Lives Matter or not, or I don't know. It's just another reason to separate us. And the Sasquatch need to, we can't have that and make this discovery. Do, do you really understand? Do you understand that, Kyle? That we can't be a deceptive, bullshit, lying species. Our job for this show is to reach out to people to say, you better goddamn make a change. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the discovery won't happen. That's why, that's why I'm doing this show with you. It's really about you better make people change. You better find a following because if you don't, you're not ready. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I, I agree with you for the most part. And like, you know, like I said, I just through personal experience, if you're not ready, they're not going to come around you. Or maybe you don't realize you're ready and they come around you. Or maybe it's just a fluke thing and you're just in the wrong place, the wrong time and they come around. But mm. um, serious question for you, though. Why do you think you have so many haters? Why? What is it? Because people are too scared of the fact that Bigfoot might be real, or do you mm -hmm. think maybe they look just too human that that has to be fake to these people? Or do you think what what, what do you think it is? Every single time, it's competition. People want to compete with me. They want to be the best. What's America? Is America a cooperative country, or is it a capitalistic, cutthroat competition country? What is it? I think we both know the answer to that. Right. So why do you think everybody wants to compete with me and I won't have it? You have the best Bigfoot researcher competition. Go ahead. Have it. I'm not showing up. It's not about the best. It's about cooperating. That's why that's why I work with you, Kyle. That's what really pisses people off. The cooperation, the growth. Man, I took I took the best. Do you understand the best Bigfoot researchers in the world? I took them out and they are the best. Jeff Meldrum, John Bernagle best. They're amazing. Maybe I shouldn't call them the best. They're just absolutely they're they're cream of the crop. Right. Yeah, that's what I work with. All these little mur, 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 mur. go ahead. Even, even, hey, hey, that's fake. Good. Can I see your video? Oh, you don't have one. Oh, when you get a video, you can come to the big boy club, right? I have eight, right? Oh, you don't have a video to compare? Well, when you, you just shut your mouth a little bit, you know, go get your, oh, you don't have a track. Oh, you never showed anybody a Sasquatch. Oh, okay. Again, big boy club here. Why am I even talking to you? That's, that's my response to them. Here you are critiquing. What gives you the right to say that you're a Sasquatch uh, critic? You're a critic? Oh, cool. What did you ever do? Dude in England, this big critic, this guy that people are talking about. Can't even remember his name. What did he live in, in England? England? Yeah. I'm like, I'm like he's li does he ever, has he ever seen a bear? <laughs> no? Oh, okay. 
he's he's a good dad. Yeah, let's listen to what this meathead has to say. And and you can hear it right in their voice. They're not the, the, the all the guys, all the guys that steal my footage have bad reviews. All the people that ask for it and I give it to them. Did you know that, Kyle? People ask me to review my footage. You know what I do? Here you go. I just want to see the final product. I don't I don't do research on them. Just go have a look at it. You don't scare me because I know it's real. Mm-hmm. And then every time I do that, they come back with these amazing things to say. Good perspectives. Sometimes, sometimes you know, they get a little into the negative, and that's cool. But it's just a matter of there's so much competition. There's so the, the Finding Bigfoot guys had to come out and do a show on me, and they had to show that I'm an ass. I remember that, that episode. I remember that. Yeah, they had to do that because why are you watching the show with these four muckahies that never did a goddamn thing? Well, this guy's out there with eight freaking videos. I want to watch his show. Oh wait, he's a liar. Oh no, yeah. I don't want. They had no other way to do the show. One of the producers who quit, she quit because I uh, can't remember her name now, but she quit because they were just coming out there to debunk me and, and and show that I'm a liar. And she knew my work was real. And she quit. She told me, Todd, they're coming to do that. And I still did the show yep. because you know why I did the show? Because I said I would. And you can come out here and you can lie. And they were they are such dishonest, awful people. The shit they did, they are low life scumbags. The name of their production wasn't Finding Bigfoot. It's called Snake, snake Oil Productions. Productions. And they were snake oil, lying, backstabbing, cheating. The stuff they did with the lot. The they 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 ruined my relationship with a native tracker because they were such lying scumbags. They did such bad shit to him. He blamed me, and rightly so, because I introduced them. So he doesn't yeah. speak to me anymore. Because I brought bad people in his life, but just it's just competition. And anybody who who comes out and sees me and works with me and really listens to what I have to say, you know, there's all all I want. It, this this is a perspective. If I ever faked it, if it isn't real, all I ever did was to fake it to prove they were real anyways. To get species protection, to train people like you, Kyle, to show you a Sasquatch, and and the, and then the truth of it is, so that's the worst thing you could say about me. Is I, f- I faked it to make it. Maybe you could say that. But but the real truth is, Kyle, and you know because you've heard them. If I'm getting you out next to a Sasquatch, Kyle, look, in New York, how close are we for that to that Sasquatch? Within 50 yards. If I'm doing that, it's probably a guy who does really have eight videos. And I was in New York with you for a week, and we did that based I, on my techniques and my work. And I guided you out there, so it's not like you had some guy out there paid fucking waiting for us. Right. I didn't know the place. There's just it's impossible. It's preposterous to think that that was done. You know, it. Sadie knows it. Sadie was even even working with Sadie and finding people like Sadie is what I do. She's incredible. You know? she, amazing woman, like so connected, so awesome. <coughs> and that's and that's what people are scared of is the power of my cooperation. Another some some new icon comes into Bigfoot community what's, or becomes interested in Bigfoot. Who's the first person he's going to talk to? You know, and who's the person that's going to bring them on board and show them Sasquatch and and prove so much more boots on the ground. That's that's Todd standing. And uh, there are lots of other great research, research researchers like me, and I, I cooperate with them even quietly. It doesn't matter. I don't I don't need to be public about stuff. Mm-hmm. There, there are powerful men and women behind this discovery that nobody even knows about. They'll never be on this show. And, uh, you know, it's it's awesome. And I, 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 I my question, to you, Kyle, is I have so many supporters, so many great people. I could never talk to literally hundreds of thousands of people. You see it in the in the shows and stuff. Oh, yeah. Why would I ever waste any time with these idiots that say this, this they're just incompetent trolling morons? Why would I waste any time with them when I can't even talk to all the amazing good people? Mm-hmm. How do you choose to live? Yeah. And we welcome sure. those people on the show too. Um, yeah. My email is discoveringbigfootpodcast at gmail dot com. So if you if you want to reach out, you're more than welcome to. And even if you have questions for Todd and you can't get a hold of him or can't seem to get him on a live stream to answer your messages or your, uh, your comments or anything, email me. And impress I, Kyle. Yeah, and I I can pretty much answer for him myself because I've I've spent yeah. enough time out there. I'm trained by you. I'm guided by you. Everything yeah. I I know that's all my research is based off of yours also and my own. So if, uh, if you got a question for Todd, I can probably answer it. But, and, and if you have incredible footage, if you have incredible stuff going on, oh, Kyle yeah. has access to Todd standing in a on his phone. He'll call me and you want survivor man out. You want Jeff Meldrum out. You want Todd standing out. Kyle will go. If Kyle decides you're good enough, you get it. That's how, that's the power this man has. So don't, don't doubt it. He has all those connections you want you want the biggest of the big to come out and and see what you have show him evidence blow his mind and he'll make anything happen that fast 
Yeah, and I got to get less on the show too. I'd love to have him. Mm -hmm. You will. So let, let's push for that. But um, so now that we've kind of got through where the hell video one is and what all that happened, um, let's talk about video two for a minute. Um, mm -hmm. When I first saw it, I thought it was just a bear that was mm -hmm. standing up and just you know got <laughs> back down on all fours. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and the footage quality isn't really that great either. So it's mm -hmm. it's it's pretty grainy and it's kind of hard to tell. But you you took that footage, correct? Yeah, that's right. I so where were you? What was going on? Why'd you go up there? It was a very uh, detailed plan. Uh, so Michael, <clears throat> that was, I was, a, I was still, I knew Bigfoot wasn't real. That's the only way I could put it. I knew they weren't real. There was no chance. You already so had video up, one though, I thought. Uh, yeah, video one. Yeah, I still knew they weren't real. I didn't know what the hell I was seeing. You can, you can literally, I, I've met people who have seen a Bigfoot and they'll go, oh, I saw a bear who had his front legs broken. So he's running on two feet and then his face was all busted off because it was flat. Like this is stupid as shit. I was that idiot. Like you just, you cling to your paradigm so badly. Like I literally, I, I can tell you this. When I came back after filming video two and three, I had, I knew they were real. I knew Sasquatch was real. And if I'd have taken a lie detector test, I'd have failed. Because even though logically I knew two plus two is four, my my paradigm wouldn't break mm -hmm. they're not real but 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 you saw them todd this is going on in my own head so a lie detector test would have seen doubt would have seen it, it took me years to settle down and go yeah they're real to, to be able to look somebody in the eye and go oh, they're real it was yeah. hard so yep. and and everybody goes through that process john bernagel talked about it and he he mentored people and and guided them through that process because most people will chastise you and mock you but especially uh, a big name scientist like jeff yeah but see, this is so a level that something nobody even knows about. I used to have it on my website and I just, my website got taken down. I didn't give a shit because nobody viewed it. But literally, <coughs> so <coughs> what we, so we're there to film a female Sasquatch. So this is video two we're talking about now, right? Video two. So okay. we're there to film, film a female. I'm there to film this person in a suit. I figure it's a native person who's using the mythos of Bigfoot to scare people away. And the way they make headdresses and moccasins and, and different jackets, they're just making a, a bear costume that's stand up. That's all I saw. Very simple for me, right? So uh, anyways, what, what, we, what Michael, who was the real genius behind this plan, what he expected was that female will come back. She had to come back past us this way. And that corridor, we're going to get footage of her, right? And what we didn't calculate for is that when you, when you disturb a day watcher, she alerts the troop and the troop comes back for her, right? Of course they do. We didn't calculate for that. So what you're seeing is that female was coming back to the troop and that's a big male. And he stood up to let her go by. Like she yeah. was coming through and I was trying to get footage of her. She just stayed really low. And he stood up and he said, you go by little girl because I got your back. This I'm the big boy out here. So he stood up and then sat down and we got that footage. But <clears throat> there's something else you need to know. So some people have told me this and this is this is a fraction of the story but you really need to understand this someone told me once you could have taken a shot you could have killed that sasquatch <clears throat> what they don't know is five yards away from trevor and i who were the only two people there michael was in another spot a sasquatch was standing there we saw his tracks and he ripped a boulder out of the ground five yards away from us and i guarantee you that boulder was cocked in his arm you move on my brother and you're dead meat we literally saw the tracks and even this is more important. So after that Sasquatch stood up and sat down, he needed, a, he needed us to turn away. You notice how I turn away for a second. Mm -hmm. He took that boulder that he ripped out of the ground and he threw it behind us and it smashed on the ground loud. Crash, bang. What did we do? I turned and looked and at it. He exited the Sasquatch up top exited and we were rope doped, right? Decoyed. We were being owned. So, so afterwards we go up there, I see how enormous the Sasquatch is. I realize it couldn't be a person. My paradigm is starting to shift. I'm like, holy shit, this is not a man. This is a giant. These, these things could be real. So my mind's getting blown. And we go down to see what that big sound was. And we see the, the rockets. It's in like multiple pieces. So we put it together. And we go back up. And we're looking. And we're looking. And then five yards away from us, we see Sasquatch tracks on the ground. And with that rock as put together as we could, it fit back in the earth right beside us. Do you understand what I'm saying? Wow. That Sasquatch walked down ripped a boulder out of the earth i guarantee you i didn't see it he had that he had that boulder ready to smash us to kill us if we flinched wrong to do with those people up the hill and then when they were ready 
he decoyed us away and then headed out of there. That's how amazing this species is. You think you're a head man, you better be careful because the one that you're looking up on the hill is not the one you need to be worried about. It's And there were probably another one around too. In my experience now, they're continuously triangulating. There's always three of them. Mm -hmm. So that was the dude up close. There was probably another dude off in the distance ready. Like we were goddamn owned. And we thought we were the big hot shit there, right? We weren't. We got that footage because I believe they allowed it. I believed it was part of this whole destiny coming forward of the journey that I needed to be on. Because Michael's not out here doing this. Michael's theory. Michael is looking at maps. He's theorizing. He's helping me out because he's old and he can't hike and he can't do this stuff. He has Lou Gehrig's disease. <clears throat> He's really sick. Trevor's done because he got smashed. He's only got one eye. This discovery put him out. It was about the journey of the discovering Bigfoot process that I've been on. And, <clears throat> and it's still facilitating and moving forward. But just I want people to understand, man, when you see a Sasquatch, <sighs> be careful. Because, again, they talk about this in Jurassic Park where it's the not the raptor raptors. you're looking at. It's the one that shh, come in from the sides, right? And these are just raptors. You're not dealing with raptors. <clears throat> you're dealing with the most intelligent, incredible trackers, wilderness experts that have ever lived. The Native Americans that were amazing, that were so great, racist white guys always had a tracker because if you don't have a tracker in the bush, you're dead meat. Your whole troop is dead. You hate them. They're lower life forms. But if you don't have one, you don't make it out in the bush. That was the way of things in North America. And those great trackers are a whole level below the Sasquatch. Intellectually, uh, physiologically, mentally, like uh, guys, the Sasquatch are, that's why we haven't made this discovery because they're just that amazing. They're literally as great as we think they are. They're a level above us. <clears throat> Unless you go in with, of course, you know, Apache helicopters and thermal and drop napalm on them, which is, which has happened, right? You want to get rid of a troop of Sasquatch, you need to do some logging. Logging companies spend a couple million, send in some military, drop some napalm or some bombs on these guys, eliminate them, and it's over, right? I mean, that can happen. And, and that's that's a, that's a bigger problem that we need to, to discuss in this discovery process. But, yeah, uh, no, that's definitely it, something that I would like to stop from happening because – Clearly. I mean, you had that happen. You, um, I think, was it in your documentary or was it um, on Les Stroud's episodes where you talked about that happening? Yeah, it was an episode of Survivor, man. I I, uh, I talked about it in detail. I can't, there's just nothing else. They went, uh, these, these, these men that had all the same boots, like army boots, military style boots, the big, the heel and the grippiness. I think they're that, called military. Mickey boots. Yeah. Uh, it had that style as a tracker and they moved in formation. And it was five of them, at least five of them from this particular direction that I caught them moving right into the perfect Sasquatch habitat where the Sasquatch go. <coughs> and I have a witness that night where <clears throat> I tell you never heard I never heard gunfire like that before. It wasn't it took me like a good 20 seconds to, to click into my head. That's that's gunfire. Like I, 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 what we hear out in the Canadian world, <coughs> one shot, maybe <coughs> mm -hmm. maybe two shots, right? We don't hear <coughs> Literally lights, <clears throat> lights of the distance, <clears throat> like fireworks, weapons going off like crazy, you know, helicopter comes in, straight in, boom down, no lights on the helicopter. Well, except the green and the red. That's what I saw. That's how I realized it was a helicopter. Yeah, there's, there's a, a green and the red light. Navigation lights, yeah. And other than that, it went straight in where all that firing was, picked those men up. And then after that, you know, I had almost nothing for Sasquatch activity after that. It's like the troop was down to two there were still two individuals that were there later but uh you know say, say what you will those are the facts that's what happened so how far so, away do you think that was from where you were sitting i know as the crow flies it was about four miles as the crow flies how come you didn't go over there i did i i tried to go well at night i didn't go over there well yeah i, I mean like the next day yeah. after the gunfire you didn't decide to I did. I did go over there. So I, I estimated four miles. I can't find the spot where the firefight happened. Really? I can find bullets on the ground. Um, the uh, the way the guys, they must have, I don't know what the hell they did. They just went to hard ground. Those boots go to hard ground. And then I just lost their trackways, right? So it was, and, and i tell you something, uh, <clears throat> something I didn't understand at the time is I was destroyed inside. Like all my tracking abilities, all my skills, I, I, I felt such pain from what had gone on i hope people gonna i was traumatized and i didn't know it 
I didn't understand. Mm -hmm. And it was just the empathic energy the Sasquatch were sending out. But I was I was dazed and I was dizzy and I was I was I had to get the hell out of there. And my colleague at the time was the same. Like just the energy was so bad. And I at the time I just didn't rec I didn't have any respect for my energy and what what my feelings were. I was like, you know, that that's not that's worthless crap. And it matters. And it threw me off. And uh it was even it was even hard for me to talk to it. So Survivor Man kind of really grilled it about me and pushed it because I didn't want to talk about it because it's a very painful thing, you know? So, yeah. And I, I've, I've, I've come to have a, a really deep love for Sasquatch too myself. So I completely mm -hmm. understand. But, and I didn't, I didn't know, like, I wasn't sure about what happened. The feelings were confusing to me, but they were there and they were very, very powerful. And it was really, uh, I, I just felt always like I was on the verge of crying. I felt always like it was so upsetting as I got closer to the area. Uh, I just I felt really devastated and so did my partner when I said I, I just I don't want to look anymore I just like I'm just not I just I need to go back and she goes I, I want to go home and we had two days left on the expedition and she said she said I want to go home I go we shouldn't do that she goes yeah but you want to don't you I'm like yeah I do like I just I feel done and I feel overwhelmed and I was that's something I never talked about was a lot of pain I, I, I felt like I was just going to cry all the time and I didn't know where those emotions were coming from it didn't feel like mine you know and and now and now we, you understand, Kyle, where were those emotions coming from? You know, why was I so overwhelmed? Mm -hmm. What really happened? And, and the truth is you understand, don't you? Yep. Absolutely. So. It's, it's something that you really have to um, experience on your own, you know, like, mm -hmm. and when, when you say, you know, like, if don't take my word for it, come out with me, people really should. And it's not, it's not even for the Bigfoot, you know, craze. It's, it's for your own spiritual and physical betterment like if you go out there in in your research area it you like get reborn and yep. uh like you i came out of there we um i spent five days in there first and we came out i had mm -hmm. better vision like yep. i was eating the rose hips and i was eating the bear berries and the bunch berries and we were eating amazing great food that you and your sister were making for us and uh thousand year old glacier water you were drinking oh my god it. and and doing ice yeah. man training in right i came out of the woods with better i could see better and like i don't have great you know vision i don't have amazing vision um mm -hmm. but it was noticeably like wow i can i can see so much better like what what is this and i just felt more clean and i, I hadn't showered in five days and i yeah. felt cleaner <laughs> which doesn't make sense it but does just just inside you feel just better yeah. and it's um i mean even nothing even happened that week mm -hmm. uh, like it was dead that week and yeah. um I, I think they might have taken apples but it wasn't anything like the week after that um yeah. but it was definitely just a huge um thing that just you just have to go experience i mean even if 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 you have your own research area or if you have just your favorite spot in the woods you know throughout the all the people listening just mm -hmm go out there for a few days, camp out there and just, and, and just enjoy it mm -hmm. and just, yeah. and just love nature because that's what matters when you go out there. And, and that's what makes a Sasquatch come around. Yep. Yeah. And you, and you need to start doing that, Kyle, you need to start taking people out. And that's, that's the whole point of the show is uh, people watching and people that develop a connection with you. I want you to take them out because you're, you're different. And, and I, I want people to, that, that's what that's what even my YouTube channel is becoming about. If you're attracted to Kyle, if you find that 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 symbiotic relationship, you find that kindred spirit with him, he's the one that should take you out. And he's going to be doing that. You're going to start guiding people, Kyle, because because I can't take everybody. There's I literally get thousands of emails asking me to take people out. What the hell am I? I can't do that. I can't even go through them all. But and, and that's I, not okay. I have connections here in Florida. I have connections in New York. I have connections yeah. up there in your research area. Um, yeah. I have connections in Idaho now with Caitlin. Caitlin's also yeah. going to be doing um, the show with me, almost like a co-host. We'll we'll see yeah. how that you know all pans out because uh, this is obviously the first show. Um, mm -hmm. So we still have some stuff to figure out with that. But yeah, no, I um, I'd love to do that. I think that would be amazing. It's going to happen. That's 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 part of the reason I'm training you guys. So uh, and you need to, you're going up radium this year. So oh yeah, that's <laughs> happening. Yeah. So, and Craig knows the way. So even if I'm not around, so that's the thing is I don't want it to be, I don't want, Craig knows the way up radium and so does Logan now. And that I, I needed to show somebody because nobody knows the way mm -hmm. really. Like, I, I don't know if James can remember the way I, I know uh, Stefan sure, sure doesn't, 
but I need people not, I'm just not taking, I didn't just take Craig up there. I showed him the way and, and that way we can grow that way. You can take other people up there that way <coughs> something happens and I I'm gone. I can't do this anymore. It never ends. That's, that's, that's my calling right now is to make sure that I just, I show you guys every, and do you, do you feel like I, do you feel like I hold back Kyle when I, I'm on expedition? Do you feel like there's stuff I'm not showing you? No, no, I've never had that. Yeah. I, I, I want to I be open. We have, we have our plans for the day, you know, like we'll go here and we'll, we'll go hit the elk trail. Then we'll come back mm. and, you know, have mm. lunch or whatever, but it's never like, all right, you know, we're doing 20 miles today, mm. you know, cause you could do that. And we, we could do that, but I yeah. think that, that would be the only holding back that I could, I could picture you meant by that. But I, I, I want to make sure I'm teaching everything that I'm exposing everything. And the, the problem is that uh, until something happens, you know, oh, Sasquatch does it. And I go, OK, let's do that because this experience happened until until that that spark happens. There's no flame to teach with. Right. So I uh, and I, you know, it, and I don't do curriculums. I don't I just I I wing it because when you're ready for it, it'll happen. When Kyle's ready for the the encounter, you manifest it. and. And that's the way I was taught. But even I'm more open than that, though. Like my teacher, there are little things he told me, well, you'll figure out. And I was like, why can't you just goddamn tell me? Like like the Sasquatch did a spiritual animal ritual. No, but you, uh, it needs to be out there. You yeah. need to tell people that. So I was, I was waiting for the spiritual animal ritual. All these people that had it tell me, oh, it'll happen when you're ready. It'll happen when you're ready. And I was like, well, you're pissing me off. And then it was the Sasquatch that did it. And I went back to him. I was like, it was the Sasquatch. They're like, yeah, you didn't know that? Well, of course I didn't know that. I'm going to strangle all you bastards. And I'm here telling everybody. Oh, you've had a spiritual animal <laughs> ritual? Did a Sasquatch do it? Then you didn't really have one because they do it. And I'm out there just like, just belting it out there. I'm, I'm that other level of let's get this info out there. That's, this is important information. I'm not going to be conservative about it at all because we don't have time to waste. Mm -hmm. We need this discovery. We need the people. We're in trouble. If you don't feel the pain and the trouble of what's going on in the world right now, you're not paying attention. It's pretty scary. And, and what, what I believe is happening that this discovery is so important is it, things get things have a tendency to get really really bad before they get great and that's this discovery yeah. is is that's the greatness that's coming and uh i i know it I, and don't you like you know kyle they're not discovered because they're that amazing because they're that spectacular yeah. you know most people are like well i just don't really get it because they're freaking amazing like they're on a frequency that's so uh, unreal it's hard to believe as amazing as I think they are every time they blow my mind and they're that much more amazing. So they're just that good. And uh, it'll make such a paradigm shift in this whole world that uh, we, we, we need this. And uh, to all you people out there, you know, we, we, we need to focus on this. We need to see the reality. The evidence is there. We're not on the show talking about the dermal ridges of the Jimmy Chilcott tracks and the, the, the footprints that Jeff Meldrum had, except we're not here talking about that stuff because that's your job to go find that evidence yourself. The evidence, mm -hmm. the physical evidence is so freaking overwhelming. There's, there's millions of sightings. If one of them is right, then yeah. this is real. One, yeah, that, just that's all it one. takes is, is one to be. You and know. millions of people, and I, I'm talking the most integral people that you've ever met. Jeff Meldrum is a freaking monster of truth and justice, and he saw a Sasquatch on my expedition. Yeah. That doesn't tell you something. We'll, um, we'll definitely get him on the show so that we can talk about that. And I, also, for everyone mm -hmm. else listening, um, we're going to have you back, obviously, because there's you got six, seven other videos that we need to get in detail on, and I need to mm -hmm. pick apart, and you know, just everything else going on with you. So we'll definitely have you back. Um, and I want to get Caitlin and Ashley on too, eventually, and uh, we'll definitely. Um, and Logan and yeah, no, I want to get. I want to get everybody. Know about so many people that uh, yeah need to dig. Yeah, That's awesome. Absolutely, but yeah, uh, we're out of time, so um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut you off. But uh, if you guys want to donate, uh, discoveringbigfoot.org. That's your website, correct? To donate. It is yes. All right, so. That would be awesome because you're helping further the research, which is very, very important. And we're almost there. Almost there. Todd says four years. We're going to get it done in three. We only have three left. I said four years a year ago. So now oh, okay. Have... So even less then. Yeah. All right. Well, um, yeah, thanks for coming on the show. Um, if you guys have any uh, questions or comments or anything like that, go ahead and email me at discoveringbigfootpodcast at gmail.com. And I will get in touch with Todd and we'll have another show pretty soon. Thank you. Take care.